My name is Matt Warshower. I'm a professor of history at Central Connecticut State University. My question is, where were America's children on 9-11? As most adults sat mesmerized by the television, watching what was going on, uh, we, we watched uh, two billion people in the world watched that second plane, Flight 175, fly into the South Tower and gasped in, in horror as we knew that it was terrorism. Where were America's children? What were they doing? Well, they were in classrooms throughout the nation. Uh, or if you're going to look at the Midwest or the West Coast, they were just arriving to school or getting prepared for school. And what I argue is that they are a generation, I, I, I argue they're the 9-11 generation, that have the most shared generational experience in the history of the world. That most of these kids, especially all along the eastern seaboard, are in class. And at this time in, in U.S. history, there's you know, some 50 million kids in school. And what they watch unfold, you know, they may or may not have seen uh, what happened on television. You know, teachers, you know, depending on the age, they may or may not have rolled a, a television into the classroom. But uh, regardless of that, what, what they saw were teachers and adults around them stop doing what they were doing. Lessons plans were forgot. Uh, teachers huddled together. Uh, there were tears. There was confusion. There was shock. And, you know, the kids might not really have known and fully understood what was going on, but they're, they're smart enough. Uh, they're acute enough in their senses to sense that something is not right. And then the parents started showing up at the schools in droves because what was the natural response of most parents uh, when a catastrophe like this happens is, oh my God, my, my child. I, it, it's, a, it's an instinct that takes over and parents rushed to schools and started picking up their kids and whisking them home. Uh, and a lot of these kids then uh, were, were, you know, put on the couch or, 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 you know, over, you know, playing with toys as the television uh, continued all day long or as relatives showed up to the house and they watched that loop of the second plane flying into the South Tower over and over and over and over again. And, and things never really changed over the course of several years. 9-11 was the first time that, you know, the homeland had been attacked since Pearl Harbor. It was the very first time that an event of this magnitude in the United States was captured on the kind of technology where everybody could basically see it happen in real time. And that has uh, just a massive impact on how Americans react to this. And that reaction filters down to the kids. So my, my fascination over you know, the last 20 years has been on the concept of a 9-11 generation, on, on what they saw, how they reacted to it, how the responses of their parents influenced their upbringing. And so I've been teaching a course on this here at CCSU for about the last eight years called 9-11 Generation. And one of the really fascinating things, a, a couple of years ago, one of my students came in and he goes, you know, Professor, you've got to see this tweet that I found. And it was uh, somebody who asked a question, why is the millennial generation always so upset? Why can't they ever get anything done? And the response came back, IDK, I don't know. Maybe it's because we saw 3,000 people die on live TV when we were eight and nothing's ever gotten better. And I think what they really meant was the 9-11 generation. Some people still call it millennials. But, but that, I think, is the thing that defines what the 9-11 generation's experience is. And so the way that I you know, write about this is that there are two halves to the generation. There is the direct 9-11 generation, and these are the kids who were five, six years old, up through maybe 15, 16, who actually witnessed what occurred and just saw the shock and horror and had no context in which to place it. There's an absolutely fantastic article by a journalist named Emma Lord, and she writes what it was like to be 10 years old on 9-11. And she says, you know, adults said it changed the world. Her response to that was, 
It didn't change the world. When we were 10, we had no context of what the world was actually like. 9-11 was the world, and it was more horrifying and more terrifying than anything they could ever contemplate. So that's the experience of, of the, the direct 9-11 generation. The indirect 9-11 generation are the kids who are too young to remember the event or who were born after the event, but they are nonetheless fundamentally shaped by twin towers that no longer exist because American society is so changed by 9-11. Uh, you know, many authors have written about that there is a, a America before 9-11 and America after 9-11. Well, when you think about it in that context, you've also got to think about, well, what about the kids who are raised in that aftermath, in that security state, in that time when we have wars that have really never ended, uh, and they've grown up in this atmosphere of cultural chaos. Uh, this is the first generation in American history that has seen never-ending war, have never seen democracy really function well. Um, they've never seen a, a president who has been brought down through the abuse of power. They've never seen the power of democracy and of people coming together uh, end a war. Uh, they've literally never really seen a, a functional system of democracy. And when you think about it in that capacity, you really start to realize just how much the United States has changed as a result of 9-11. And, and when we ask a question like that, or we theorize ideas about, well, what did 9-11 really do to America? Uh, we don't necessarily think of the kids and what their thoughts are. Um, and when I've talked to kids, uh, you know, a lot of students, I mean, I've taught hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of students about this subject. And of course, they're their sort of position on 9-11 has changed a lot over the years as we've gotten further and further away from the event. But they still realize that, that this is a, a fundamental turning point in American history, that it's something that is, you know, uh, in just often for them it's in intangible ways that it's connected to their life. And then when we start really investigating and researching and reading about 9-11, they, they, you know, they come alive and, and realize, my God, I, I didn't realize just how much my life was shaped by this event that occurred when I was really young or occurred before I was even born. And they come to see that their outlook on politics in America in particular is that our system of government isn't working that the most basic things, and they, you know, when you talk about terrorism, they're as concerned about domestic terrorism as they are about foreign terrorism. And they, they consider school shootings a direct form of domestic terrorism, and they don't believe that government or any of the adults in our society can do anything about it. They don't believe that government or the adults in our society can do anything about climate change, can do anything to balance the playing field about the economic uh, you know, situation and an, an economy that doesn't work in these kids' favor. The, the problems of rising uh, tuition costs at colleges and universities. All of this is, is caught up into this, this swirl of a vortex of dysfunctionality that has followed in the wake of 9-11. Of and so this event to me and this concept of a 9-11 generation is so much bigger than just the, the, the single moment in time. And I, and I talk a lot with students about the idea that, you know, most Americans think about 9-11 as the 102 minutes. And that's the amount of time from when the first plane, Flight 11, hit the north face of the North Tower to the time that that tower fell. It was the first tower to be hit, but the second tower to fall. And that time frame is 102 minutes. And what most Americans think of is that 102 time frame. Or if they go before or after it, it's solely about the stories of the people who were impacted by that moment. But 9-11 is so much bigger than that, especially for these students who have grown up in its wake.